Hello and welcome to another video. I still don't have a decent mic, studio or a tripod, but I do have the new iPhone 15 Pro, my current phone, an iPhone 12 Pro, and a camera, a Sony a7R 4 with an SEL 2470GM lens, which are both quite a few years old now in terms of photographic technology, AI autofocus, image processing, etc, etc, but I thought I would compare these three and deep dive into the iPhone 15 Pro's camera to see how it's come on since my last video when I compared the iPhone 12 and the Sony a few years back. Now, I'm not really going to copy the multitude of reviews out here talking about the color of it, how it feels in your hands, the aesthetics, etc. I did watch some of these, usually made by really good YouTubers, middle-aged men with perfect tech caves and game chairs and American accents and clean audio. I got none of that. But I will try to show you as good a technical comparison as I could possibly. My primary interest is in the camera and its image quality and if it could ever replace a mirrorless or DSLR camera for my purposes. I'll be using photogrammetry software to compare the cameras which relies heavily on image quality and decent optics to produce noiseless detailed 3D meshes from well taken images. I'll be using the native camera app, the Halide camera app, Agisoft Metashape, some light and a bit of blender and ZBrush for my demonstration. If you don't know what any of this is, watch my previous videos. So what do we know so far? The A17 Pro chip in the iPhone 15 Pro is around 20% faster, the raw mode creates some very large files, and I hit iCloud, and within an hour of using this phone, my iCloud was full and Apple wanted more money for iCloud. The lens specs Apple have used is largely marketing jargon, and instead it relies on digital zoom and software tricks to achieve focal lengths and in some cases depth of field. While it claims it has a 48 megapixel camera, I believe this is achieved from combining groups of four pixels using a quad bay or color filter. Also, it's largely been said that the lens on the sensor on the 15 Pro are the same as the 14 Pro. However, the 15 has a USB-C port, which is amazing for me, has some fancy autofocusing. It seems to focus a lot quicker than my previous phone. It takes so-called spatial video and has some other stuff that I really don't care too much for. Now in this test, and please don't judge me too hard, my studio was the same old backyard. I used an incredibly thin and generally useless backdrop, however it did provide me enough contrast for masking later. An automated turntable controlled from another phone was used and some rather old but ultimately steady tripods and an occasionally unsteady hand. Although I got round this with either a timer in halide or the interval mode on the Sony, which doesn't allow continuous autofocus. Annoying. The subject, this ugly cactus, was photographed at 9 degree increments 40 times from one pass. Usually. I would have this set up indoors with a triggered ring light cross polarization if scanning something glossy and would take multiple passes at different angles to capture all sides. In these tests I was shooting with daylight as a light source and with only one pass but I did do multiple tests with different ambient brightness and camera settings to aim for the highest quality. When producing high quality 3D meshes usually much more images are required and various techniques employed to photograph all sides of the object. All filters, picture modes, automatic white balance and artificial enhancements were turned off to the best of my knowledge. I shot in 48 megapixel pro raw on the iPhone and in some tests saved to TIFF in Lightroom and used straight 60 megabit JPEGs from the Sony without converting from raw. The obvious advantage of using a mirrorless camera is the control over the aperture and whilst higher settings may produce less sharpness the aim is to try to keep as much of the object in focus as possible at all angles. With a tripod this means using a slow shutter speed to control the brightness at as low an ISO as possible. And the app that I used to shoot most of the photos on the iPhone was Halide and the settings I used, 48 megapixel here, most compatible, and obviously Pro Raw. One of the useful features here is you can turn off location data for preventing Facebook spying. One of the great things about this application is being able to have a three second timer, but one of the biggest annoyances is not being able to turn on the manual mode on 12 megapixel. It says iOS limits manual exposure. So on the 48 megapixel images, everything was automatic. I chose the focus spot and maintained focus, what I thought was focus throughout the range of the shots. Cloudy white balance turned on here, no auto white balance. And in this, you can see the exposure is 0.5, but I corrected this and turned this to zero afterwards. Now let's have a look at the iPhone photos first. 8064 by 6048 pixels. I've got an exposure of 1 over 678, the f-stop obviously locked at 1.8, ISO 100, and a 53 megabit file in this case. Now I tried to fill as much of the frame as possible with these images, probably a couple of centimeters on either side. All I've done is just crop these down to get them the same size on the screen, and we're going to have a little look at the comparison. And what I consistently noticed with the 48 megapixel RAW files is some softness around the edges. 
this is obviously completely straight in front of the camera so I would have expected sharpness all around. I don't know if this is my camera, if this is my shooting skills, but I tested under different conditions and this seemed to be consistent around the toe here and around the heel. The A7R4 photo here at the same zoom and we're picking up some of the fuzz around the edges here and some small spider webs and stuff like that which really helps for the reconstruction detail in the 3D scan. Again, more sharpness here on the A7R4 side on the right. And here we have the comparison between the iPhone 12, the iPhone 15 Pro and the Sony A7R4 on the right hand side, the iPhone 12 here. And again, this backdrop weak as it was was useful for masking out some of the images later on so with the iphone 12 image seemed to be a little bit more in focus than the iphone 15 pro but again at 100 percent obviously the larger image size providing more detail in this area and zooming the iphone 12 to about the same size we start to see lots of detail here and the Sony A7R4, again, no color correction or color grading or anything like that, straight in from the JPEG here, didn't use the RAWs as mentioned before. And what we've got here in this comparison is the 48 megapixel raw composite on the left hand side and the standard 24 megapixel image on the right hand side here. Okay, here's the 24 megapixel image versus the iPhone 12's 12 megapixel image, sorry, the iPhone 12 Pro. And these were taken with the cameras side by side, automatic settings. And um, we'll have a look at the detail here at 100%. So the iPhone 12 on the left hand side and the iPhone 15 Pro on the right hand side. We can definitely see more detail around here, around the eye, sharper. And again, picking up some detail here, which probably doesn't come out too well on the iPhone 12 on the left. Now on to the photogrammetry testing, and I used Agisoft Metashape for this test. Uh, I could have used Reality Capture, which I've used in my previous videos, and it is faster, and I believe it works out cheaper, especially for stuff like this. You would literally be paying a dollar maximum, I think, or under a dollar. You can see in some of my previous videos how much the cost of the scans are, but for turntable scans, occasionally it doesn't work for me without masking them out. Now, I did take most of my scans on a contrasting background, and I did mask some of the images in Photoshop, and it's relatively easy to do. Also, Agisoft has an added benefit that it will run on Mac, and I've tested it on a M1 Mac before, and although it's slow, it does work. So if you are a Mac user, although this strongly favors uh, NVIDIA GPUs, I would uh, consider using Metashape on a Mac. Now for all my tests, I use default settings. The key thing here is to make sure there's no blur in the images, and that we've got 360 degree coverage. Again, 40 images. For the default settings, I've just chosen high on the alignment. And again, this takes a couple of minutes depending on your GPU, but I seem to do most of the tests in about five to 10 minutes on a 4080 uh, desktop GPU. And all the images are aligned and a quick look at some of those images. And for the next step, Build mesh, depth maps, high and 10 million, and straight on to that. Very, very easy to use this uh, latest version of Agisoft Metaship. Lots of other features in here which the photogrammetry purists um, would use, and I would certainly use in other mesh generations, but this is literally a one pass 40 image test. Trying to set up the cameras in such a way whereby the image is framed as much as possible, and in the shoe tests, landscape on both cameras and in this one portrait and again not moving the object between shots and doing an exact nine degree rotation for every shot and so onto the geometry so far it looks pretty good it's got some of these little spikes here and we will it's got some of the detail in the pot the little um bit of stepping there 
which I've seen in MetaShape before, but we've generally got all the detail, micro detail here on the pot. And most of the things I wanted to have come out here. Let's build this texture and see what that looks like. Texture has to be expected. And again, the black at the top is just because I didn't do a top pass as mentioned previously. This was really just about doing it from one location. And because I had a multitude of tests, I had to really do this with 40 images. And this is a result from the Sony A7R4. This was the images I fed in in the end. And again, all the images aligned 360 degrees. I think I had one missing here, 39 images. And there's the solid mesh for that one. Again, at first glance, I will take these into ZBrush or Blender later on and we will look at the meshes in detail. But again, for a 40 image pass, getting just about everything I need. Again, the top exempt from this. I'm just really looking at the profile here. And the textured result there with no patches or blurriness in the texture, which is what we want. And I'm going to export these out as uh, OBJs. And here we see the iPhone 12 example. Again, exactly the same settings as the others. And on initial impressions, slightly softer than the previous two. Just build this texture and export it and we'll do a comparison. And as promised, import into Blender to get rid of some of the geometry we don't need. The largest file by a long shot, the Sony, um, nearly 900 megabytes. So the results are in. And we have some pretty hefty files here. We'll start off with the Sony A7R4 at uh, 9,458,000 faces bit of noise down here and a bit of stepping here but that could be to do with the high aperture generally not the greatest scan in the world but these sharp bits have come out just fine we've got some great detail coming on here and we've got a few little bumps and stuff here that on the other side of this that were on the plant that have come out again the definition along some of these is useful. I'll probably come back to this to a cross polarized scan because some of the surfaces were a little bit reflective, which could be a result of some of this noise we're getting here. Now for the iPhone 15 Pro. Pretty surprised with how good this is. Again, a little bit of stepping there on the base and a little bit here I can see on the stock, but less noise here than the Sony. Uh, probably a bit more noise at the top here and a bit less definition. It gets a bit low res here. 7,580,000 faces for this one. Let's go look at that iPhone 12 Pro. As to be expected, the softest here, but still very complete. But at the 12 megapixel image you can see here, definitely not as much definition, as much detail there. And a lower res mesh. Just over 2 million faces. But again, if you're looking at this at a game asset from far away, this would work. Let's get them all back up together. Again, the pot detail, it just gets finer as you go along here. Deeper holes and some more detail. See this detail here on the A7R4 and some of these indents here coming out a lot better. This detail is slightly sharper along the stem. But a pretty good result from the iPhone 15 Pro. Definitely an improvement on the iPhone 12 Pro. If you were using these meshes to 3D print a high resolution mesh, or you would appreciate that extra detail. I'm going to put these scans up on my Sketchfab. You guys can download them and I may start a Patreon or something if there's any demand and you can download the full res meshes or the test images yourself. So to conclude, whilst I do claim some disdain for Apple, it is a great phone. The depth sensor and LiDAR 
uh, or TOF sensor are unmatched on any handset and have benefits in the world of AR, facial mocap and even quick room scans. I paid for this phone. I'm not sponsored by anybody and I'm drawing my own conclusions from what I can see and I generally don't upgrade my phone unless the last one breaks. This costs nearly £1,100 and the iPhone 12 Pro you can pick up for around 200 now and that includes the LiDAR sensor and the depth sensor that so I gotta ask myself, is it really worth it? If you're a diehard Apple fan, you'll probably say yes. But really I can pick up a decent Android phone nowadays with some fully manual phone controls, maybe even a one inch sensor for around five hundred pounds second hand. USB C isn't big news on Android phones, nor is SD's card for additional storage. Attaching a hard drive to your phone to record footage, regardless of the speed, really shouldn't be news in twenty twenty three. Despite all these in depth camera tests, most people use these phones will not care about photographic techniques and using aperture I so and shutter speed creatively, software will suffice and this indeed appears to be the path many cam camera manufacturers are following. If you want to take images of your pug and dinner to be compressed onto Instagram and to be viewed with filters on a tiny mobile display, this phone will certainly work for you. For low light photogrammetry and even non-turntable shots, I think having good lenses, in-body stabilization and full control over your camera will always be superior and I think the images show this. The photogrammetry however, once in a game on a mobile display will all that Geometry matter with new techniques like Gaussian splattering, nerfs, etc. With the ease of use of mobile phones lead the way. Not much has changed in imaging quality on mobile phones to justify me using one as a main shooter since my last video, and I'll stick with a mirrorless camera, even one with a horrendous menu that's coming on four years old. As for the LiDAR or TOF sensor, to those in the know, we'll have to wait until another video until I test that. iOS 17 again promises some better photo and LiDAR integration with the Object Capture API, so stay tuned, subscribe, and again, if I've done anything wrong, or if you think you can improve this video, definitely hit me up in the comments, and I'll hopefully see you again soon for another video. Thank you for watching.